built this playhouse to be more than just a playhouse. We wanted it to be an investigation into the life of Kai's program. We wanted to show not only how things were built back in the day, how they were constructed, we also wanted to give people insight into the culture that went along with building a structure this large with no power tools, no cranes, no nothing. It was truly a community building project and we feel as a class that this brought us together and formed new bonds and new friendships just from working on the project this large. Timber framing has been around as early as 2000 BC. Although the word timber framing, otherwise known as half timbering, wasn't actually used until 18. The unique thing about a timber frame house is that it doesn't actually use any nails or screws or bolts to hold anything down. It's more so of the structure itself, known, otherwise known as a Morrison tenon joint. The most common method in erecting these structures was known as uh, scribing, which was every socket and every uh, ten Morrison tenon joint had a certain number, and each beam had to go in that specific socket or joint. The development of the square rule carpentry. Uh, which was in, developed in New England uh, in the 18th century, actually helped this uh, process of timber framing much easier because uh, it allowed for interchangeable beams. So instead of instead of uh, like scribing, you only had one beam per socket. You could interchange, you know, whatever beams to your new, to your needs. So you could faster erection, faster construction. <laughs> the development of the square rule. Carpentry um, must have helped Henry throw our boy out because he was a 19th century uh, nature writer and it, it was developed in the 18th century. So many people and entire movements have cited Thoreau as an inspiration over the years. He was a man of diverse interests, so we can see his influence on history, politics, philosophy, and the scientific revolution. We wanted to look at the source of Thoreau's inspir own inspiration and create a sort of map that shows how the impact Thoreau has had on our world today. Sort of like a family tree, this shows where Thoreau has come from and what came from him. We have a few more timbers to combine at these joints, being the posts and the other members forming the base. And the size of these timbers is, what is it, a quarter inch or a half inch smaller? In? Uh, these are going to be a half inch smaller, they'll be five and a half instead of six, so take that into account for all our measurements now. In studying the evolution of woodworking tools since the rose time, the evidence of increased speed, accuracy, and efficiency of cutting and carving operations is undeniable. Even before the Industrial Revolution between 1820 and 1870, the progression of skilled work by master craftsmen and cabinet makers decreased faster and faster allowing for easier cutting to be done by saws and woodworking machines. The handsaw replaced the chopping motion of the rose axe with a more precise, continuous cutting method. The electric-powered saw is more powerful and easy to use than the man-powered axe. The auger is still used and remains a symbol of craftsmanship, as does the mallet and chisel. The advanced tools we use today have turned the art of wood cutting into the act of cutting wood. And now it can be done faster, safer, and easier than ever. Well, as many of my teammates, uh, I, came out, I came into this project with a certain idea in mind and in paper. And it turned out that uh, much like Poland, it's a big difference moving from the conceptual to the material practice world and uh, a, lo a lot of uh, improvisation had to be made on the flight and it turned out okay because uh, we simplified the house and we were able to put it relatively easier than what I originally thought and uh, you know the professor Grapper has been a great resource in this uh, project and um, it's been a learning experience uh, very very nice learning experience uh, I can't wait to do my next project later. so I began by looking at what inspired Thoreau to write about his essay about civil disobedience. And it was largely because of the Mexican War, and he, re he refused to pay his poll tax um, as, as kind of a statement to the Mexican War. Um, and then I looked at um, a couple of major uh, world movement leaders that were inspired by Thoreau, um, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. with the Civil Rights Movement, and um, Gandhi, both um, instrumental leaders that were uh, inspired by Thoreau's work on civil disobedience. And then finally, I examined um, two, two large uh, 
uh, movements that have happened this year. The tar sands action um, in D.C. where over 1,200 people were arrested um, in front of the White House um, uh, protesting the Keystone XL oil pipeline and also the Occupy movement, the Occupy Wall Street, which is sort of morphed into the 99% movement as well. Um, and just seeing how Thoreau's uh, idea of civil disobedience has kind of changed and uh, is being reflected in those two movements. All right, as part of our project, we decided to make some apple cider. So uh, that kind of relates back to Thoreau. He wrote a lot about apples. He actually wrote an essay titled Wild Apples, where he talked about how they came to our country and how they were a part of um, our life back in his time. Uh, also, when you're building something like this, you have a lot of people involved in it usually. When you get all these people together, you're going to eventually come together and uh, enjoy food and drinks at the end. So it would have been a pretty typical thing for people to enjoy cider when they're building a structure like What we wanted to convey with this project was, you know, more than just the construction of a playhouse. Uh, we wanted to investigate more of what it was like, um, you know, to actually build formally during, you know, the time period of growth. Um, you know, in the 19th century. Uh, so the process that we've used, you know, is timber framing, um, traditional, um, creating joints, you know, and the methodology behind that, you know, design, construction, you know, the multiple iterations that we had to go through to get, you know, um, the final, the final being. Um, you know, and there was a lot of that went into it, you know, multiple components, you know, not just the physical, but, you know, the intellectual. So we have, you know, investigations with civil disobedience as well as, you know, throw, um, or Theruvian influences, rather, um, uh, as well as, you know, tool usage. You know, we want to investigate all aspects of this to encompass, you know, um, this class, um, you know, eco-criticism.